All right, we're looking at lesson 2-5, and we're talking about adding and subtracting rational numbers. Uh, but I thought a couple lessons ago we had a lesson on adding and subtracting you know what? integers. Adding and subtracting rational numbers is what we're talking about today. But like I just said, we just had a lesson on adding and subtracting. But that was adding and subtracting integers. Okay, <clears throat> who remembers from yesterday what a rational number is? And remember, there are specific parts we have to identify. It's not just one statement. It's several different parts. Okay, uh, let's see. Give me a part of it, Nate. Okay, a number that can be written as in the form A over B. Okay, give me more, Brian. Um, B cannot equal zero. The denominator or B cannot equal zero. And then one last part. Integers, they have to be integers. A and B have to be integers. Okay, so let's put it all together real quick. A rational number is any number that can be written in the form A over B, where A and B are integers and B cannot be zero. Okay? So that's a rational number. Okay, um, do you think you need to understand that? This whole chapter is on rational numbers. Do you think it's key to know what a rational number even is? Yes. Thank you for all those head nods as Sol was recording. Um, yeah, thank you for your agreement there. But yeah, I would say you need to make sure you understand what a rational number is. And I might ask you that some other time in, on a piece of paper. And you will have to answer that. On the retreat. No, not on the retreat. You Wait. Be like, Dude, this kid, that'd be like, you know what? Pop quiz. That is a great <laughs> idea. I never even thought of that. You need to Thank literally, you, in the middle of the. Um, okay, look on the top of page 100. Thank you for all the great ideas. I will take that in consideration. All right, look on the top, or excuse me, look on page 100. And again, we're adding and subtracting rational numbers. Um, look where it says method one, method two for adding and subtracting. Which method? Which method do you think is superior? Superior. One is inferior to the other one. Which method do you think is superior then? Raise your hand and give me your opinion. Matt? Method one. Method one is superior to method two. Now, method two, where you use a number line, you are allowed to use a number line. Look at their number line, though, guys. How do they divide their segments into fourths? And you can do that. You can divide it into fourths, eighths, sevenths, any fractional, even, split. But two and one fourth, two and two fourths, two and three fourths, three, and then they repeat that pattern. That is one way to do it, but that is inferior because of how hard that could be. Uh, method one says use the rules. So what we need to do right now is review the rules. So we need to review the rules of adding and subtracting, and we're going to talk about the addition part because really you can make subtraction into addition as we looked at a couple days ago. All right, um, we're going to talk about the rules for integers, okay? But what is this lesson called? Adding and subtracting? Rationals. Okay, ready guys? Rational numbers use the same rules as integers same rules but there are going to be different types of numbers we're going to deal with mainly fractions and decimals that's basically what this lesson means adding and subtracting fractions and decimals that's what we were referring to with rational numbers so let's review the rules uh, the first one dealing with same signs or adding same signs <clears throat> does anyone remember the rule last class I asked them and they they didn't use their books or their notes and they just stated them like very well. I think you guys can do it too. What's the rule for adding two numbers that have the same sign? How can you kind of put that together? Lucy? Yeah. You add. And no. No. So they have the same sign. If you're adding two numbers with the same sign, what can you do? Add and there's something else because you can have two positives or two negatives. So I think. Okay, I think, I, I think you understand what to do, but let's put it into uh, uh, 
uh, phrase here to help us review the, the rule. Okay, Jack? Uh, all right, Maggie, thank you for that little chime. I'll remember it. It'll probably stick to me during lunch. Thank you. Okay, listen up. Go ahead. Same signs do what? Okay, and here's, the, here's what you really want to get, and it's tying together what we already looked at. Add the, and I'm going to put a blank here, add the, and keep their common sign. What should go in the blank? Add the blank. It's two words. It's a term we looked at two lessons ago. Add the blank blanks and then keep the sign that both of them had. Yeah? Close. Something values. Something values. Mm, it starts with an A. Then B. Lucy? Absolute values. Add the absolute values and keep their common sign. And uh, what I did for the other class, and this is just a way that I picture it. It's not an official way, but basically when we, and we're talking about two. If I add two positives together, what do I get? A positive answer, right? I'm adding two positives and I get a positive, right? If I add, add two negatives, what am I going to get? A negative. We're not talking about multiplying and dividing. We're talking about adding and subtracting. All right, so you guys get that? That may help you out. If that doesn't help you out, you know what? Don't write it down. That's totally okay. But when you're adding two numbers with the same sign, keep their sign and add the absolute values. All right, so what's the rule for different, different signs? So what would that rule be all right here? Anybody? Yes, Jenna? Um, you subtract and then you keep the lesser sign. Very good. Subtract what, though? You would subtract the, the what do we call those values? Absolutely. Okay. So we subtract the, and then I'm going to put a big blank because it's a very important concept absolute values. And I'm going to put in parentheses least from greatest. And um, there's actually a reason why I'm going to phrase it that way. So you subtract the least or the smallest absolute value from the largest absolute value. And then, which sign do you keep? Keep the sign of the larger, and I'm going to abbreviate abs value. All right, so this is a review. This is not new stuff, I hope. This is what you did um, two days ago with those problems. Subtract the absolute values, keep the sign of the larger absolute value, right? And so I did this on accident in the other class, but it actually helped out. So it was I don't take the credit. If I were to draw that out, if I had a negative plus a positive, what would my result be? I'm adding a negative and a positive. You don't know, right? Doesn't it depend which one's bigger? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see I wrote a small subtraction sign and a big positive sign. So this one has a bigger absolute value. So my answer is going to be positive. And do you notice, and actually what I did here, and this is, I didn't do this um, by foresight. But you see how you have a little, little negative and a big positive? And then your answer is a smaller positive, but it's still positive. Why do you think it's smaller positive? Because a negative kind of shrunk it down, didn't it? Okay. If you have a negative plus a little positive, what are you going to end up with? A negative. Slightly smaller than the first negative, right? because you took away from that negative. Okay. And you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's okay. Just write that down. 
um, if you need, if it helps you. If it doesn't, you don't have to write it down. Okay, those are the rules. How many of you have memorized those rules already? Like you get them, I, get, I don't need help anymore. Good, so we're gonna test it out. Let's look at example number one. Um, here, example number one, all it says to do, and we're gonna do A first, all it says to do is find each sum. Okay, find each sum. And A is four and one eighth, four and an eighth, plus uh, negative one and one half. Oh man, fractions. And in fact, these are mixed numbers. So is there anything I can do here to help me out? Well, which rule am I gonna use, the first or second rule? Second. Why second? Because these are different signs. So what are you gonna do here? How are you gonna work this problem out? In actuality, what are you basically doing? You're getting the absolute values and doing what? Subtracting. Subtracting. So your problem is really four and one eighth minus one and one half. That's the problem you're doing. That's it. Um, I want to go over the process here because there, are, and like I tell you guys many times, there are many ways of doing this problem. I'm going to show you one way. Okay, just one way, not the ultimate way, but a, I hope helpful way to see this number. Okay, um, I showed you guys this last year. Do you guys remember the vertical format where you kind of stack them up on each other? And we're going to subtract. This is very helpful for subtracting, but also for adding. Okay, so here's my problem. Here's what I'm working out. Okay, I'm going to subtract the fractional parts and then the whole number parts. Can I do one eighth minus one half right now? No, because it doesn't have a common denominator. So remember, and this is, I'm showing my work so you know what I'm thinking of. I'm going to multiply one half by four over four, which four over four is really worth what? One. So which property am I using here? Identity. Multiplying by one is which property? Identity property? Good. Good. Identity property multiplication. That gets me four eighths. Okay, so I have one eighth minus four eighths. I could do that, but I'm going to get a negative number, and then I have four minus three, so I'm going to get three and negative three, three eighths. Not going to work out. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to borrow. Can I make, can I borrow from the four, excuse me? Yeah, I'm going to borrow one from it and make it a three. Okay, I'm borrowing one. All right, then one eighth just got one added to it in the form of eight over eight. Because what is eight over eight? One. one. So I added one and now I have nine eighths. Okay, so let me pause here before I keep going because I don't want to lose you. I want to show you that what we're doing is proper and allowed. Um, is 4 and 1 eighth the same as 3 and 9 eighths? So did I change the value? No, I changed the way it looks. Maybe it's more useful. What's 9 eighths minus 4 eighths? 5 eighths. And what's 3 minus 1? 2. Positive or negative? Look at the original problem. Which one had the greater absolute value? Positive did. So it's a positive, and I'm going to put that for emphasis. You don't have to put that in positive. Okay? Are there other ways to work out this problem? Of course there are. But that is one way I wanted to show you so you have a tool. Okay. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. No, you can, if you don't put a positive, we assume it's positive. But do you assume it's negative if it doesn't have a negative sign? No. So that's what's nice about the notation. So no, you don't have to write positive. Okay, B. Now we're dealing with fractions. So just like I told you, when we're talking about adding and subtracting rational numbers, basically what we mean we're adding and subtracting fractions and decimals. That's what we're dealing with, which uh, are not always our favorite numbers, but they are useful. And I'm just going to make a little confession here. Applications in statistics, medicine, science, math, they're all going to be parts of numbers. They're almost never going to be whole numbers or integers, it's just the way it works. That's the way the world works, parts of numbers. So negative one and three fourths, negative one, excuse me, negative 1.43, um, plus negative um, 0 0.458, Okay, which rule are we using, one or two? 
One, because they have the same sign, right? So what am I doing in this problem? I'm basically adding these two absolute values, and which sign am I going to keep? The negative sign. Easy problem here. So what I'm actually doing is I'm just going to add the absolute value. So 1.34 and 0.458. What do I have to make sure of, sure of when I'm adding decimals or subtracting decimals? I have to do this. Line up the decimal places because we have to line up place values. So if you need to fill in spots, you can put in those zeros. We get 8, 9, 7.1. And is this my answer? No, because I need to put in the negative. So that would be my answer. Negative 1.798. 798 thousandths. Okay. You guys get that? Pretty straightforward. I would say this. Listen. Every one of you is capable of getting all of these 100% correct if you just take some time to think about it. Real quick, you don't just start um, working out the problem. Just look at it and say, all right, rule two or same sign. It's going to be negative, and then add them up. Don't go too fast through this because it's going to affect your ability to get them right. Oh, my. And then they throw C at us. Who thought of C? Not two numbers, not two rational numbers, but three of them. Oh, ah, three numbers being added. All right, negative two fifths plus one and one half. Negative two fifths plus one and one half. And then they also have plus negative two thirds. Plus negative two thirds. All right, so here's our problem. Oh, man. Okay, guys. Can you apply properties? to rational numbers. Can you apply all those properties we looked at to rational numbers? Okay, uh, let's do a flashback here. Remember with all the properties, remember one of the key phrases we used was any real number, or you can do this to any number. So is this a number? Is that a number? Yep, all three of them are numbers, so all the properties apply. Now, how can you work this one out? You can go left to right, add these two together, then add these two together, or you can do what? Use the, and instead do what? What do you think I'm gonna use the commuter property for? Mm -hmm. Add the two negatives together, and then add the positive. You can do that. You can even do this. Some of you are creative. You can go right to left. Imagine that because it doesn't matter the order of the add-ins because of the commuter property. So you do it your way. Um, I'll do it this way. Go ahead and work it out whatever way you want. I'm going to work it out adding the two negatives then with the positive. So you work it out your way, whatever you want to do. Um, and I'm going to work it out the vertical way because it gives me the most space, but you could do it horizontally as well. I'm showing all my work because I want you to see what I'm thinking. It's not just I randomly come up with something. And don't uh, be careful not to circle the wrong part because that is not my answer. That is an addition problem, but that is not the answer to my problem. And uh, here's where we're going to have the problem if we're not careful. Um, here we have two different signs. Excuse me. Yes. Two different sign numbers. So we have to do subtraction of the smallest from the largest. Which one has a greater absolute value? Which one has a greater absolute value? Yeah, the 1 and 15 thirtieths or the 1 and 1 half. So really what I'm doing is 1 and 15 thirtieths minus 1 and 2 thirtieths. 
Okay, and what sign is my answer going to have, positive or negative? If this one was the greatest absolute value, I already know it's going to be positive. Uh, 15 minus 2? 13. Yeah, 13 thirtieths. And then 1 minus 1? Zero. 0. So 13 thirtieths. Um, and uh, did anyone do it a different way? You did not add the negatives together, then the positive. You did something else. Okay, did you get 13 thirtieths? Great. Fine. Good. Do it. You can do it anyway as long as properties allow it, and obviously you're applying the procedure as well. So that's it, 13 thirtieths. Is that positive? Yep, positive. And I put that positive again just to emphasize it is not negative, it is positive, but you don't have to write that into your answer. Okay? Oh no. Our favorite operation, subtraction. Everyone can see this after lunch. <laughs> See?